Gemini, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for mid-November 2023. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know, I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business as always and start you off with an oracle card here, just so we could dip our toes into energy and see what's going on for the lovely Geminis. Hope you're all doing fabulous and fantastic, my friends. Let's get it going, my gods. Talk to me about these Geminis here. And yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card. Then we'll get into the full reading itself. And at the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot, just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which is always interesting. But let's rock and see what we got for the lovely Geminis in mid-November, please. Let's get it going here. Talk to me about my friends. Oh, that card almost came out. It didn't, though. There, there we go. Okay, this showed up in the Aries reading as well. So not sure if you're connected to an Aries or not. But generally, to me, this is a beautiful card. So it could speak about looks, it could speak about aesthetics, but there's also the energy of someone laying low, not wanting to start problems, not trying to like cause waves. So I find this a very interesting way to start any type of reading. Now, before we start digging into the details, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the November subscriber surprise towards the end. So you might want to check that out. Also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye you know i'd greatly appreciate it but enough of the promo into the reading let's talk about this card so if anyone knows what type of birds those are please let me know but to me they seem like cranes possibly and you see a group of them and then there's a woman dressed up in costume within the midst of them now first and foremost like i said this is a very beautiful aesthetic type of card so for some gemini's maybe you're thinking about changing your look in some sort of way whether it's like a new hairstyle or just something about looks, fashion, you might be wanting to switch it up or upgrade when this card shows up because there is the aspect of the self. But the main thing I always think of with this card is somebody trying to blend in or lay low. So for a portion of Gemini's, maybe you're in that mode, right? Maybe you're just like hermit mode, laying low, laying back, not starting it, like staying to yourself in some sort of way. And this could also represent someone you're linked to that doesn't really want problems right? Like they don't want to cause static, they don't want to cause problems. So this is like a very chilled, laid back type of energy where someone's just like, okay, let me take a, a breather for a minute. So it's laying low. So I'm not sure if that's you or somebody else, but we're just going to put it down right here. Once again, this card showed up as the first card of the Aries reading as well. So if you're linked to one, you might want to check that out too. But let's get into tarot. And I always say that first card, it doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a little footnote. So let's get you three tarot cards in the upright. Then we'll get into the intuitive juiciness here. Shuffle it up one time for my Geminis. And while we get the deck ready, let's talk about last week's reading. There was an ending in the midst, right? So I'm hoping if you've been going through any sort of endings or closeouts that haven't been too rough. Because it has seemed to me, like in recent weeks, the Gemini readings have been particularly tough like more so than usual. So I'm hoping you haven't been going through a rough time, but let's see what we have for you this week. As you know, energy is very fluid, never set in stone. So only take this out hits for you, right? We could be seeing your vibe or someone you're linked to. Let's get it going. Get your three cards in the upright. What's happening before we get to the intuitive stuff. What do you got for Gemini, please? Mid-November. All right, Ace of Swords. That is an energy that you can jive with. That is an energy that works very, very well with you. Could be conversation. It could be a lot of things. It could be your mental state. Okay, stern, like about their business type of energy. Very mind-based. Let's get a couple more. I always like when we start off with an ace, particularly the sword of truth. Okay, we have another sword card. So the mental action is flying here, my friends. Maybe you're under someone's microscope. That's a possibility. Let's get one more out here. Then we'll really start to piece this together. Elementally, we're already starting to get a picture forming. Okay. Knight of Pentacles. Lots of people here too, huh? Interesting stuff. So get that Knight of Pentacles chilling right there. That could be slowing something down or bringing something to a halt. But let's just see how this all gels out, Gemini. We might have an interesting one on our hands. Let's go through. I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes, and we'll get into the juicy, intuitive stuff. So at first look, first glance, and I've been seeing this throughout a lot of the Zodiac this week. Lots of court cards. So we have double court cards showing up here on the back end. We have double sword cards. So with swords, I always say that represents the realm of communication and the mind. Okay, so we have an inner energy, we have an outer energy, work and money and things like that. 
So let's go through one by one and really start to piece this together because there's a lot of nuance here. Position number one, we have the Ace of Swords. Now, all aces are opportunities, even this one. Now, this one is a little bit more stern than the other aces. I'll always say that. The Sword of Truth. Now, this can be a card of extremes sometimes. For one, it could just represent one's mental state or well-being, right? Like how someone's thinking, their mind. This is a very logical, analytical type of card. So you might be looking at something very analytically, very logically, like, a, okay, what are the moving parts? What's going on here? Why is that happening? Just like picking things apart with your brain. Not bad. You know what? Whenever there's any ace, there could be good new things coming in as well. And I'll say that with the page, like there could be a lot of new things, new cycles and things kicking off for a lot of Geminis. But with the Sword of Truth, it can also be very stern, a little harsh sometimes, very serious, similar to like the Queen of Swords and King of Swords. Like there's no games here, right? So it is very honest, straightforward, to the point. So if we are talking about a communication, it could be serious, important, or very stern whenever we see the Ace of Swords, which is something I've been seeing for you in recent weeks as well. But once again, this could just be someone's mental state, right? Like how their mind is, how their mind is working, how their mind is going. Okay, so we're really going to want to dig deeper into that Ace of Swords. Moving to the center, we have a card that could represent you, possibly, right? This could be all air signs when we have the Page of Swords. So Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, if you have any dealings with any of those. Pages could represent children, people that are younger than us. Pages represent learning things. They could represent new realms and new paths that we're walking down, but they are communicators. So... We're starting off, actually all these cards have aspects of talking and communicating and messages to them. The Page of Swords, if we're not looking at you, because in my simplistic style it could tell us something that's coming towards you or what you might be feeling, the Page of Swords is very defensive. Yes, it's like the other pages where it's going to learn, it's going to communicate, but it has its guard up. It's very just watching, right? It's very analytical. So we have a lot of planning. We have a lot of analysis happening here. So whether it is strategy or just someone looking at a situation, the Page of Swords is called the Spy of the Tarot deck. So just know you might be under someone's microscope. You might have someone under your microscope here, right? It doesn't have to be anything crazy and obsessive or anything like that. It's keeping tabs. That's a big thing with this Page of Swords. Like, okay, whether I'm keeping tabs on this person or I'm keeping tabs on the situation is what it is. So this is going to be an important card in this reading, that's for sure. Now, as we move to the back end, we have the Knight of Pentacles. Knights are also messengers, right? This one you see is inspecting that pentacle. Could be an earth sign that you're connected to. So Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn energy. And when I see this, I always say it is like so slow. Something that is so slow that it might even be stopped type of energy. So hopefully this isn't something that's sticking around for a while or too long or something that's hard to move through or move past the knight of pentacles could represent delays and it's tougher energy if it's not a person but this can also be good once again it's a messenger it's somebody that could be choosing their words very carefully choosing their angles so there's a little strategy here there's planning involved with all this even though there's a lot of communication and messages there's a certain level of planning and strategy so we're really going to want to check all this out so the Knight of Pentacles doesn't have to be bad, though. It's very particular. So with that being said, Gemini, I want to dive deeper. Let's jump in and clarify. All right. Let's get a good shuffle here for my lovely Geminis, please. And yes, my friends, this is where I go intuitive with the message. Which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot. Because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation, and I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on that Ace of Swords here. And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages that you want to give to Gemini, drop it down in the comments. I don't mind at all. All right, Ace of Swords, what's happening? What's happening, my friends? So Ace of Swords, thank you. Oh, okay. All right. I'm getting a very forceful energy like, yeah, no, this isn't going to stand. I'm going to change this. So you might be really identifying some aspect or something in your life that has to change. Like, all right, there is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is going to change one way or another. I'm getting a very, very forceful energy here 
right in the front end. So whether that's you or somebody else, it's like, it's hitting me like a ton of bricks when this Hierophant showed up in reverse. Now the Hierophant is Taurus energy. Usually it's very grounded. To me, it could represent long lasting relationships and connections. It's within the box. It could represent power structures like corporations, governments, things that are huge like that. But the Hierophant is also a card that's so stable. It represents everyday life, day-to-day -day life. And when I see it turned upside down, that's similar to tower type energy. So underneath this Ace of Swords, it's like, all right, I'm very serious about making this change. Like something has to change. Something has to go or something has to switch. As it is right now, it's not working. Okay, like that's somebody's opinion here. Okay, not saying that it never will, not saying that it can't, but something in its current state, something in its Hierophant upright is just not working and it has to change. So whether this is somebody planning or strategizing, trying to figure out ways to switch a dynamic, that's just the vibe I'm picking up here. So someone who is very, very serious about a change or a change that is serious in its own way, like, all right, well, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna make this switch, whether it's job, relationship, or what have you, and there's big implications here, right? That's why I said either they're taking this change seriously or it has serious implications. So let's just put it down right there very forceful all right so if that's your energy like i believe you <laughs> i believe what you're saying and if that's somebody else it's like all right that's i don't want to say it's a little much but it's very forceful okay so let's see what that page of swords is about we're going to keep it moving here What's that page of swords here thank you yep okay yeah, we have the Seven of Cups in the upright. This is generally a card of options. It could be a card of daydreaming and things like that. There is somebody absolutely keeping tabs here. Okay, there is somebody checking the pulse like multiple times a day on something. Okay, so whether this is someone checking on you, checking up on you, or checking out the situation, feeling it out. Once again, just like that card in the very beginning of the spread, like this is someone I don't think they want to make waves. But, but just know that someone could be watching you, right? Like, and I try to not say that in an ominous way. Could be you, right? Maybe you're looking at this situation. Maybe you're looking at various situations and the different outcomes. That's another vibe I'm picking up. But the intuitive thing I'm getting here, if it's not you watching someone or someone watching you, it's like somebody who's checking the pulse of the situation multiple times daily. That's just the intuitive vibe I'm picking up here. Okay, whether it is somebody overthinking something, overthinking it, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to look at this angle, then I'm going to look at that angle, then I'm going to look at that point of view, then I'm going to look at that point of view. It's like getting dissected from every single direction. Okay, that's just the vibe I'm picking up. I feel like those are the two main messages. Either someone's watching or mentally dissecting a situation. Let's keep moving. It is what it is, right? Let's see what that Knight of Pentacles has to say, then we'll do a quick recap before we get into the shadow card interesting spread so why is the knight of pentacles here thank you page of pentacles yeah this is somebody who's not really talking about their plans as of yet okay so there might be something that is still in the planning stage okay so all the things i was referring to in the front end like this the being serious about changing this, changing that, and dissecting things from different angles. The Knight of Pentacles with the Page of Pentacles in reverse tells me that someone's not really talking about it, that this is something on someone's mind, that it's being planned. So there might be someone that has a plan or they're trying to assemble one, but it's not being spoken about just yet. Very slow to put something into action. So whereas there's a lot of mental energy, mental action going into a specific situation with all this, the Knight of Pentacles with the Page of Pentacles in reverse tells me like, okay, well, action hasn't been fully kicked, like kicked in just yet. So it's in the thought stage. It's in the plan stage. It's not fully kicked in. Now the Page of Pentacles in reverse, you get it, right? I already spoke about them being messengers and students. The fact that it's in reverse is not telling anyone just yet. So with this, the Knight of Pentacles, maybe there's something you're thinking about or working through mentally and you're keeping it to yourself for the time being, or this could be someone you're linked to that's just in that mode. Okay, like not ready to make a full on action just yet, not ready to make a move. So I will say this, if you're dealing with tensions, if you're dealing with problems with specific people, it might be good to try to talk it out, but they might not be ready and willing as of right now. Let's go through and do a quick recap because this is in a lot of different places here. 
This can be seen as stable on the back end, but I'm picking up a lot of different wavelengths here, Gemini. So let's go through one by one, then we'll get into the shadow card. So in position number one, we do have the Ace of Swords with the Hierophant in reverse. I did say to me, it's like, okay, this needs to change. Someone being very serious about switching something up, making a change in a dynamic, in a situation, in circumstance. It's like, no, this is going to change one way or another. And very stern and serious about it. And that is what it is, right? Or it is something that needs to change, but there's like a sternness. In the center, we have the Page of Swords with the Seven of Cups. The two main things I was picking up here is one, like there's either people watching, right? Either you're watching someone, someone watching you, and or this is somebody dissecting a situation from every single angle. Like, all right, what's their perspective? What would they think? What would they say? What's this perspective? What's the fallout here? There's like this mental dissection happening in the center. And it makes sense because there's planning involved here. But on the back end, the Knight of Pentacles with the Page of Pentacles in reverse. So all this mental action hasn't been kicked into physical action just yet. It's still in the mind. So whatever somebody is planning, just know that there are plans in place. Someone is planning a move of some sort, but it's not been spoken about and it's not been kicked into full material action just yet. Please take a screenshot, Gemini. We're going to see what's in the shadows for you. And remember, this energy could be someone else's. That doesn't have to be yours. But we're, we're going to see what's in the shadows for you. Guys, talk to me. What's in the shadows for Gemini, please? And thank you. And yes, my friends, I always like to do this at the very end of a reading just to see whether it's something within you or something you don't quite see. It's nice to just take a little look at the shadows. It doesn't always have to be a challenge, right? And if you've made it to this point in a reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it down in the comments below. It's a beautiful way to support. And I just put a, a new tier in there. It's a couple bucks for those of you that want the Zodiac emojis and the membership badges. So obviously no pressure. Let's see what's happening. Get one shadow card for Gemini. Thank you. Okay, Queen of Cups. And it it's like the whole reading encapsulated into one card when I have the Queen of Cups show up in the shadows. Now, this could represent a water sign that you're connected to. It could represent issues or something in regards to a mother figure that lingers within you. The Queen of Cups is generally a very loving, very nurturing type of energy very deep, powerful emotions, a lot of intensity in someone within them. There's a lot of love and care as well, so there's tons of it showing up, but the one thing with the Queen of Cups, specifically her shadow side, is that she's not communicating something, and we saw it within the read itself, where there's a lot of planning, there's a lot of thought, there's a lot of mental and etheric energy happening, but someone is not quite speaking it just yet, so maybe that spirit doubling down on that message, like, okay, something's in the works, it's just not being spoken about yet, and it's not been put into action just yet. For some of you, you might need to really vent your feelings out as well when this shows up as a shadow card. Like, don't hold something in. Find someone you could trust or talk to and vent it out before it eats you from the inside, okay? But aside from that, there's a lot of love and care and emotion here. So, Gemini, that's what I have for you this week, my friends. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give you the details. The November subscriber surprise. If you got your name in for the October subscriber surprise, the winners will be in the community tab after this week's fire and air readings. But for November, we're bringing back winner's choice. Two lucky subscribers will get to pick a deck of their choosing up to 40 US dollars. So if you'd like to get your name in for that, it's two simple things as always, my friends. First, you must be subscribed. And second, let me know down in the comments. Out of all the zodiac signs, which one do you think is the most fun? Which one do you have the most fun with? And yeah, after that, you'll be entered to win. And at the end of November, I'll pick the winners at random as usual. My friends, much love, and I'll see you soon.